Red over here too. Good morning, guys. Thank you for being here. I know I'm. I know some of you know Karen. Um, some of you don't. Uh, welcome to our awesome, awesome Friday morning calls with uh, our top producers, actually. So I want to introduce you to someone very special to us here at LA Harbor, but also a really good friend, I would like to say. she's She has the heart of gold. Um, God, I mean, I've known Karen now for six years. Um, and longer than that. I know, well, true, yeah. longer than that. That's right. I remember when when we were selling, uh, when we were going to put our house for sale, um, Karen was obviously one of our neighborhood agent and literally my husband and I called her and go can you come look at our house and I remember you told us it's a comfortable house <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but she yeah she's a dear friend we love her very much on personal and professional level um, and those of you that do know her you know how uh, how giving and um, you know how amazing she is as a woman as a wife and as a mom so we're very very happy to be in business with her as well um, we chose Karen particularly, and I know she made this comment, she's like, why me? Nobody wants to hear from me. I go, you don't understand the impact that you have on all of us. So I wanted to bring her on again because she's just, I, I know she doesn't like to be in the spotlight and I'm sorry for this, but she is just one of the most phenomenal women I know. So Karen... I know we, we touched base a little bit on this, but for a lot of our agents that's currently on the call now, they are new to our organization and to our KW family. Just give us a little brief, uh, I guess, insight of how did you get started? Um, why did you get into real estate? And, um, you know, and how did that look the last however many years you've been with our, with our industry? Well, actually, this month, it's 25 years since I got my license initially. Um, it seems like it's gone really fast and there's been a lot of changes and market up and market down and shifts. And, you know, now we're going through another one again. So kind of interesting. Um, but um, I was have been in the sales industry in some way, shape or form pretty much my entire career. So or my entire working life, uh, starting with uh, retail, a uh, short stint in fast food. Um, uh, a lot of years in retail, a lot of years in a, in sales in a different industry. Um, but the good thing about that is that I was able to, some of my first clients as a realtor were from the other industry that I was in when I started sharing with people that I was doing something new. So um, uh, I kind of always had a fringe interest in real estate. I used to look at the real estate home guide every weekend in the paper and see all these agents with their pictures and their accolades and whatever. And they, for me at that time, they seemed like they were almost like little celebrities, um, including people in this office that are still here, um, which says a lot about them and their staying power. But um, so I just, you know, when I was getting the itch to do something different, I said, well, I'm going to try this, not really understanding what it took to to be that and to get to that level but um you know i was very blessed because i hooked up with an independent broker um who was a very good mentor and taught me how to do things the right way and um with ethics um you know which we should all have obviously but um it was nice to learn that way uh, kind of grassroots um and i did that for about 10 years um, and in that time, I actually did start my own brokerage. So I did that for a while also. Um, but I didn't like the administrative part of that and what that entailed and the responsibility of worrying about one person saying one wrong thing and, and the consequences of that. Yeah. Um, so when, and I resisted uh, going to a big brokerage um, and particularly Keller Williams because Keller Williams was newer in our area at that time. And um, all you heard was the chatter in the background about, oh, don't drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> you know, some of the agents were a little, I felt like a little aggressive because of the profit sharing and the downline. And, you know, you had your competitors out there talking about how it was a multi-level marketing scheme and all this kind of stuff. So when I finally, you know, did the work and looked into it and, um, you know, uh, saw what it truly was. And, and I remember walking into the old office that we had 
uh, because I was doing a deal with somebody in the office and they had a big thing painted on the wall that said Keller Williams, where the agents are the stars. And um, it was really cool. And, you know, I started to see that culture and it felt like it was a good fit. And the funny thing is coming into Keller Williams after 10 years as a, as a top producer, I mean, I was, people knew who I was yeah. in our area. Um, I felt like a newbie, like there was a whole world being opened up to me of things that I didn't know. I never knew about prospecting and cold calling or any of those things. And I was really blessed that I had built a business really from my sphere and referrals up to that point, you know, but then when, you know, I was told, uh, you know, that we're in the, we're not in the sales business, we're in the lead generation business and some of the other little platitudes that came out, you know, a listing agent is a lasting agent and some of those things, like my whole mindset started to, to change about how to actually run my business. And obviously, even though I did well before, it's translated into what it is now. No, absolutely. And when, at which point when you decide, okay, I need help and, you know, I need to start leveraging and building the team that you currently have today? Well, um, the good thing is, is that some of the people came with me from my office when I came here. A lot of them have gone on to other jobs or other companies are not, not with me. Um, my one uh, pretty constant has been Irene. We've been together for about 19 years. And uh, she's my executive assistant, but she's also a very dear friend. She's a good person. She's a confidant. Um, she knows more about my business and my finances than any other person, including my own husband. Um, so I always said, if anything happens to me, I get hit by a bus, whatever, go to Irene. She's got it all dialed in. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, I'm very blessed for that. Um, but I have... Um, you know, Jonathan, and uh, who's like my right arm guy. Um, he, not only is he an agent, he's pleasant. Um, he's accommodating. Uh, he's, I've had, I had two clients just in the last week that called me just to tell me how amazing he is. Oh. I mean, so when somebody makes that kind of an impact on people in your business, I couldn't be more grateful um, that, to have him as part of the team. Um, he's just kind of like our utility player. He's our marketing director. Um, but he does have a degree in marketing, so that's not just random. But um, And he's a phenomenal singer, which we'll find out. All of you who haven't heard him will find out at the karaoke party. Yes. Um, you know, and just, uh, you know, pleasant to be around again. And Lee uh, came to me with 10 years of experience. She's um, great. We had done a deal together at the time that I needed to grow my team and um the one thing about lee is she's tough enough to deal with my personality which can be difficult at times i'm not gonna <laughs> lie that's why i'm tucked back here in a corner in my office because i'm loud so you know it doesn't permeate everybody else although i suspect at times it does um and emma recently joined the team and now we're working on uh, putting together an expansion office in the desert. And I have uh, somebody out there who used to be on my team here, who's now located there. So uh, because I have a home there, that's my happy place. Um, when I, you know, retire, eh, that's a joke. When I, <laughs> I don't eat, think you are. <laughs> I retire, at least I'll have something to go to when I get there. That's right. Um, yeah. So that's basically it. No, and that's, I mean, that's not just it. That's a, such a huge accomplishment, but it also is a testament to who you are as an individual, right? I mean, you have your, your team and you guys are just phenomenal, each and every one of you and, you know, who you are as a leader and as, you know, the, the owner of your business. I mean, it's, it's so amazing on what you do and how much, how far you go for everyone and not just the clients, but also the people that is around you. And I have to say that I, I, again, very fortunate enough to be a part of your life, but also a part of your business and your successes. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an amazing, amazing, um, I guess, view as an outsider, just looking in, I mean, you, what you've done is just phenomenal. Um, well, and, you know, not, I'm not sure, I'm sure you've seen on social media, but the Prestige team uh, actually won 
the top 1% producer, top producers in California, according to Real Trends. I mean, how did that feel when we told you that? Um, I was kind of taken aback because you came in and you said, would you mind if we post this on our social media? And I'm like, I wasn't even aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I have to say it was a, a bit of a proud moment. Um, you know, just I, I, you know, from things in, in my own past to um, having reached that, that point of uh, success, I guess, if you want to call it mm -hmm. that, it wasn't like my goal to say I'm going to make this list or whatever, although the people who know me best know that I do have a very competitive nature, which is <laughs> totally everything against our culture, but <laughs> it's uh, just part of who I am. But it does, it does help propel me and keep me moving forward to have that little piece of that within me. Um, but it was a very um, humbling moment as well. Yeah, no, and, and very, very, very well deserved. I mean, you know, you, uh, you actually missed it earlier, Karen and I we were just chatting. She was in our, she was in the office last night until 10 o'clock. I mean, this woman comes in, you can tell when she's in the office, she's constantly on the phone, she's with her client, she's servicing any at any given time she's servicing anywhere between five to ten people at a time at least it feels like it on when i look at you right um you make sure that each and every of your client get your attention i know that some of your clients and even the testimony karen has so much going on on a on, on a daily basis but when she's talking to you she makes you feel like you're the only person in the world and you have her full attention Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? I mean, what kind of superpowers do you generate to handle a certain amount or this magnitude of business? I don't even know. I mean, it's <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, you know, I was here late last night because I'm trying to take off for a few days to spend some time with my family, which, you know, my family gets pretty neglected. And I know that's not the way things are supposed to be. And it's not the hierarchy of what our our business model is. Uh, but my family has is neglected a lot. I'm sorry. There's one of those little bugs flying in front of my face, and I don't want to do this and look like an idiot, but I got to make it go away. Um, but, um, you know, so I'm trying to take a few days off, and I can't leave with a clear mind unless every single thing on my desk has been touched and every little detail is handled or somebody will be handling it. And that's just kind of how I've always been. Um, you know, but a lot of our business does come from referrals, you know, and from our sphere. And I, you know, that's something I don't take lightly. So I want to make sure that the people who um, give us those referrals are not sorry that they did and will continue to do so. And it's important to make everybody feel special, you know, no, absolutely. I mean, I have clients we've sold multiple homes to, you know, over and over and, and um, I'm actually going to visit one in the desert this week to help him get some remodeling stuff done when I'm there. Um, you know, so we're, we're, um, you know, I just, it's, I guess it's just, you have to focus, you know, and just be present for that person. Although I've been in the car for the last few days with a client who's moving back here uh, from out of state and she's been really cool and quite amused by the way that I'm like sometimes juggling three different things at the same time and you know but just do what you got to do that's right absolutely now I know so you said that a lot of your businesses are past clients and referrals mm -hmm. so does anyone on your team sell lead generate at all oh yeah of course always constantly we have several referral sources that we use um, and um, I got to say Jonathan has done an amazing job with our online presence our website um with our um, uh, rankings, um, SEO, whatever. So we get a lot of organic business now that we didn't get before also, which is always nice. Right. Um, but yeah, we do, um, Emmer, the one reason I really love him is he he's a sales guy, he's young, he's energetic, and uh, he comes from a sales background as well. And he has no fear about cold calling. That is not something I've ever done. And I've been blessed that I've never had to do it because that is not my gig. Um, I play to my strengths and I try to fill in the gaps with other people who make up the, the difference for what I lack. And um, he is really good at that. Um, 
Lee is very good, um, not as much with the cold calling, but with the warm leads, the ones that come in from our referral sites and things like that. She's really good at connecting with those people. Um, very generous with her time, you know, taking people out to learn about them and, you know, make that connection to earn their business. So, like I said, I, I, um, at my, my point um, in time, after all these years, I run mostly off my sphere and referrals, but, um, but I do, and I, and I kind of leave a lot of lead generating to my team, I hate to say, sure. but um, at the same time, and I don't know that there's any not, that there's any way to say this without, I, I, I try to stay as humble as I can, but my name has been out there for a long time now. And sometimes that alone is a benefit um, Absolutely. to, to the other members of my team as well. I just, it doesn't feel good for me to say that because it doesn't feel humble, but it's just the, the reality of what it is. Yeah, no, absolutely. But also it's, you know, but it's what you have built, just like our organization, everyone knows who Keller Williams are and is. And just with you here in our market, when you say Karen Anderson, I mean, that's how I found you that, that one time when we needed help, right? Mm -hmm. It's because your name was out there and whether you would show up or one of your team, as long as we knew that Karen Anderson is there, we're good. And I mean, that was the confidence that, you know, that we had as clients um, or as individuals as well. So mm -hmm. you have built that brand and I think you should take absolute pride, um, but not just the Karen Anderson name, the prestige team alone. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, you know, I talked to a lot of Asians and they know exactly who you guys are. And, and that took years to build and a lot of hard work and a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. So you should be very proud of that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So Let's kind of dial it back. What does a day in Karen Anderson life look like? <laughs> That's a fun one. Um, okay. Well, I mean, you know, it's, let's see, I wake up. Um, my very kind, patient, retired husband uh, brings me, I want to say breakfast in bed, coffee and toast in the newspaper. Um, and I know that a lot of people don't still read the paper newspaper, everybody gets it online, but that's been our routine for almost 30 years. So um, I try to stay to that routine and we have that time in the morning that's like our time. Um, and then I get up, get ready. Before I leave my house, I order Starbucks on my app. It's uh, right or on my route by the time I leave my driveway and get to Starbucks, my coffee's ready. Um, head to the office and then see what the day brings. Um, I'm not nearly as structured and with time, time blocking has never been a thing for me. Um, and I see the benefit of doing it. I have for a long time. The problem is I always feel like if a client needs something, I'm not going to tell them, oh, I'm sorry, I'm time blocked for this. And I'm not going to deal with that now. You know, I'll deal with that after this time. It's just not in my nature to do it. Um. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's probably better to do it that way, but it's not, not my way. Right. So, um, you know, we do a lot of things because we, we are very hands-on, you know, with our listings, if, um, things need to be done, we get them done. Um, that includes, you know, if repairs need to be done, we coordinate all that, hire the contractors. We've been doing concierge service for years mm -hmm. before concierge service was a thing. So, you know, when you come to us, you get the full thing. So I do spend a lot of time, you know, designing and coordinating and, uh, you know, we stage our own listings, most of them. Um, we stage all our listings, but we stage most of them ourselves. I do have, we have a warehouse full of stuff. Um, so basically once I get all the main stuff dialed in, like what has to happen and who needs to do it and what's, gonna, what's this going to look like, Jonathan kind of picks up the ball and runs with that after and makes sure that people are where they need to be and, and all of that coordinating uh, so I can get on to the next one. Um, I'm also probably really hands-on when it comes to, I don't handle a lot of buyers anymore. Most of them are people who are repeat clients of mm -hmm. mine personally. Yeah. Um, and I'm very selective about um, like what properties they're sent, you know, I know what they're looking for. I know what they need. So I, and where I could put things on autopilot, I don't always do that because um, 
you know, I want them to know that this is like a curated selection for, for them uh, kind of thing. Um, you know, I do all the listing appointments. Um, and then just, you know, a lot of little things that I, I, I realized last night when I was cleaning off my desk until 10 o'clock to be able to take a couple of days off that I need to become a much better delegator because there's a lot of things that I have here in my little fanned out pile on my desk that could be done by other people and don't have to be done by me. And they stress me out and then they don't get done. And that's not good either. So, right. So, yeah. No, I completely understand. So that's typically what my, I'm usually here till at least seven, you know, seven thirty, and uh, go home and eat, pick up my computer and cover anything that I haven't done <laughs> that I didn't do during the day uh, while I'm trying to watch TV and spend some time with my with my husband. Yeah, I was going to ask, so when do you spend time with Paul? And then also, you know, when do you, when do you take a, a pause and say, I need to take care of myself, right? Like when, like, do you, do you, are you trying to be more proactive in that or, you know? I'm trying to be, um, it's, it's, it's very hard because it's just not who I am. Like yesterday I went and at nine o'clock and I got my, my quaff done. <laughs> Um, and then right after that, I went and got my nails filled um, because those are super important things for me. Those mm -hmm. things have to get done. Um, and then, you know, I went and met a client and went out and looked at property. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I really have to squeeze them in and I have to schedule them. And, you know, what I realized in trying to take this time off and coordinate it around other people's time off is that one of the first things I was told by the people who brought me into Keller Williams is at the beginning of the year, you need to sit down, you need to plan out your vacations and you have to work everything around those. Mm -hmm. So I did write down um, the things that I want to do between now and the end of the year. And I'm going to make a commitment this weekend to put those things on the calendar and let everybody know that that's, I'm not going to be here because my husband has a milestone birthday coming up um, mm -hmm. this fall. Um, and uh well, you have I a milestone sure birthday coming up that. too. What's that? You have a milestone birthday coming up as well. Okay, we can agree <laughs> <about> that. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, that and, uh, you know, my grandkids, you know, they're already eight and 10 and it's like, they just got here. How are they eight and 10, you know? So I need to make sure that I devote more time to, um, or that we schedule out some time that we can spend together as well. So yeah, no, that's amazing. amazing. I'm kind of learning as I go. <laughs> Aren't we all? A Even daily after all these years. Yeah. Yeah, and the exactly. Older I get, the more, you know, the, and the crazy thing is, it's not like I'm old, but mm -mm. physically you can feel that you're not the same as you were 10 years ago. And how sustainable is it to work this kind of schedule? Like, you know, for how much longer? You know, right, you know. exactly. No, and I, but sounds like you know you're leveraging it out. You're you're you know making sure you're delegating. I think that's trying to trying yep. to learn you how got to this. do those things. <laughs> you know, it's sometimes I'm always behind the. It's just like with you know my clothes and things like that. By the time I catch up with the style, that's already on its way out, and the new thing is in. That's how I feel about this. And I know you know I just I'm I made a conscious decision when we were doing this this morning to just kind of keep it real because. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can come in here and say that everything's all sunshine and roses. And, uh, you know, I am so blessed for what I have and I wouldn't change it. But, you know, the, as I get older, I realize the things that, um, that suffer for what I've built, you know, I need to address those things. That's why when I see, you know, people like Adela, for instance, with mm -hmm. young children, how they keep up the pace they keep up and still don't, you know, because their children need them, you know, my daughter's grown, but you know, I, um, it's, it amazes me when I watch these young, you know, families with these responsibilities working so hard in this, in this industry and how they do it. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. Hey, what is it? Um, I remember you told me when I first started to be careful and not sacrifice too much for mm -hmm. the business, but mm -hmm. also try to find a balance. And I remember you telling me that when I first, first tried it with our office. Mm -hmm. And ironically, I think that over the years I, I was able to, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, to a certain point, you just, you forget 
to balance. And it's because you're like, no, I need to focus I, because I know that what I'm building now is going to help me in the future, but right. the future really never came. If that makes sense. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like a constant, you know, um, okay. Time is slipping by every year is passing by. And then the sacrifices is more and more and more. And it, when, mm-hmm. when does it stop? When, right. when do we pause it? Right. So no, that, thank you so much for our newer agents. What would be your advice to them? ones that are just starting off, they're in their first year and, you know, they're, they're building their own empire. Um, I guess I would say, don't reinvent the wheel, um, which is, you know, something that I've done. And, you know, I realized that we're so well equipped with in, in Keller Williams per se, and with, to have the red book, because it literally is the roadmap of how to build your business, you know? So when I got that, you know, 15 years ago when I came here, it was like, oh, this would have been nice to have 10 years ago, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there that really makes sense about how to build a business. Mm-hmm. Um, follow it, you know? And I, like I said, I, I don't always follow it to the T. And the funny thing is the older I get, the more of those things that I'm trying to go backwards now and implement, because I realize that if I do, it's going to make my life easier you know, um, they, that I need, they need to understand not to be too hard on themselves, but they also, and I tell people, this is not a part-time job. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started in this business, I was, I had another business and I was fortunate that it was my own business. So I was able to work my time as I needed to, but I did real estate kind of part-time for two years before I said, you know, this is really what I want to do. It's much more lucrative. Um, and I kind of started letting the other business go and, and went into this full time and it made a difference, you know, um, but it's not a part-time job and there's many components of the job and they need to take, um, take advantage of the things that Keller Williams as a company has to offer. And I do tell people who are looking to get into the business that even if you don't stay here, even if it's not a fit, the training and what's offered to you are amazing, you know, and uh, to take advantage of those things. I mean, I never, I was, like I said, 10 years in business and there was never Ignite or any of those, you know, things that, you know, I had a very good mentor, but some of the things that I learned after the fact would have been really helpful to know in the first 10 years. Yep. So to take advantage of those things, take advantage of the culture and the fact that there's people to help you. And don't be afraid to ask those questions. I mean, I kind of got, you know, and they say when you're teaching your kid to swim, throw them in the pool and they'll learn how to swim. That was kind of how, you know, even my gal was wonderful, the lady who taught me. But um, that was a lot of how she taught me. She goes, (laughs) here's the people to call. Call these people and ask them those questions, you know, and you'll get the answers you need. So, um, but like, I'm not, I'm not a coach. I'm not good at that kind of thing. But if somebody needs help, my door's open and I always welcome them to come in and ask me questions if they have scenario questions or um, how would you handle this questions? Um, You know, and it's kind of funny because Irene, like I said, has been with me for so long, my assistant, if I'm not here, she goes, well, I could tell you that this is what Karen would do if you asked her that question, you know? Yeah, exactly. Because she's pretty much seen every possible scenario. But, um, you know, so I, I try to, you know, be a mentor for those people too. No, absolutely. And and we are so very grateful to have you, you know, with our organization, with our office and, you know, and being a part of it. And you are a part of our culture. You are the culture, right? I mean, you, you're, you're such an inspiration to all of us and I can't thank you enough for that. And, you know, just know that we do appreciate you. We appreciate, and we see what you do for, for all of our agents, whether it's our sister offices or not, Um, you know, you're, you're always willing to help, even though you have a million things to do I know every time I walk into your office or I text you or I call you you drop whatever it is and you always help and for that I am very grateful but anyone else have any questions for Karen and I hope you enjoy our segment today or our session um again you know like she's take advantage of all of our of everything we have to offer please contact your leadership please contact myself um if you need any help whatsoever for your on you know on your business we are here to support you always 
Karen, we love you so much. Thank you very, very much for all that you do and for being with us this morning. I mean, 30 minutes is a long time for you, I know. <laughs> it's still in one place, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys don't understand. This woman doesn't sit still. She she doesn't walk, she runs. Um, so when you, you and you hear her coming, so you need to move out of the way, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been that person. Gonna shake right through. <laughs> my daughter but used to tell you. me she knew when I was coming to pick her up from daycare because she could hear my footsteps like exactly all the way from the car. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Happy Friday, happy fourth. Um, please be safe this weekend. Um, if you have open houses, take care. Have a great open house. Um, other than that, you guys have a great weekend. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you. No problem. Have a good day. This was amazing. Thank you 